In this lecture, we are going to discuss the Bash shell and concentrate on Windows. How to use Bash on Windows. So, what is a Bash? Bash is a default terminal on the Linux and Unix, and it's the command interpreter where you type in your commands. On Windows, you can get it with Sigwin. When you download Sigwin, you'll get it in C colon Sigwin bin Bash installed out there. And Bash has been around for a very long time. Originally, it was called SH and developed by AT&T in Unix. Then it, there's a variant called KSH and there are many other variants like ZSH, CSH, TCH and they had bad designs but SH and has eventually evolved into Bash by the GNU Bash and it, it supports a lot of features and all, you can do almost anything, any kind of programming in Bash. Okay, so let's see what is a bash terminal. When you start a terminal on Linux, you get or you type bash in Windows, you get a terminal console, and this is called the the cursor. We type in a command, and this is called a prompt. The prompt can contain some information about your host name, your folder, current folder PWD, and the prompt type shows you what kind of a user are you, admin or super user or a regular user. And what your username is. This is root. This is probably running on Linux. So then let's see what are the commands you have. The first command that you're probably typing is ls. ls means list uh, whatever is in the directory or folder. Minus l is option. That is, I want long options. And will is the folder name that you want to print information about. So the first set of characters is the permissions. And the first character itself is a type. It could be a F for a file, D for a directory or a socket or something, S for socket. And then R, W, X means it's readable by you, writable by you. X means you can run it as a command. And your group, you belong to a group of some users. So they can read it and they can execute it. And then a third set of characters is the, uh, uh, everyone else on the computer. They have read and execute permission. And then you have some number of links. How many people are pointing to this file? How many files are pointing? So it's three. And who's the owner of the file? So the user is called Will, who's the owner. And which group does he belong to? That's the name of a group. And what's the size of the file? And what date was it last modified? It's November 28th. And the name of the file. Okay? So that's our file. So you'll be using ls a lot. The second command you'll be using a lot is a cat command. Cat prints the file to the screen which is the terminal also called slash device tty when you say for example you can type in cat slash etc shells you'll see all the shells available on a computer shell is a, a command interpreter which runs and executes commands on your behalf when you type in something so you have bash sh no login suppose your login suspended your shell will be no login and every process has an environment and uh, how do you access environment by by saying set set will print all the environment variables and if you want to print a particular environment variable say echo dollar home home is a folder in which you start out and you put all your files you don't put it all over the computer you put all your files in your home and then uh, ps minus p is a command ps is a process status minus p is option to the ps command and dollar dollar is the current process so and then so you get you say echo dollar shell you get slash bin bash and you say ps minus p dollar dollar it says pid 4481 pts0 time 0 bash command is bash so bash is running took 0 seconds and on pseudo terminal 0 it is running and a process ID is every process a number. They may not be sequential for security reasons. They may just random numbers which represent a process. But usually they're sequential small integers. And Unix files names. How they how's the files organized? The slash is the root of all the all the folders and directories on your computer. Slash dev is where all the devices like keyboard and TTY and hard disk are found slash bin is where all the executable programs are found slash home contains uh, all the user folders slash etc contains uh, system configuration files like the registry on windows 
and user applications and slash user so then you can use sim links to point one link to another instead of making copies of the file and so what does the unix file system look like there's a root at the top there's a boot in linux there's a user etc as various settings at the home devices proc is a virtual file system in which all the process information is stored by unix or linux inside user you'll find bin share lib include and said each user can put whatever they want so usually you'll have a bash rc which is a command that starts a script that initializes your bash then you can have your desktop pictures whatever else you want to make and it's up to you how your folders organize so what are the common keyboards uh, key used on your keyboard control z is to suspend the command you can type fg to bring the command to the foreground or background to send it to background bg control c will interrupt the command you can kill a command and if you really want to kill it is a control backslash control d is end of file and you press couple of times you will log you out so control d means basically you are done with the input and on windows it is control z to the cmd and in the olden days we had control s and q s to stop screen input control q to continue screen input so uh, basically if a screen is scrolling by too fast you can press control s and q to control the speed of the scroll then bash comes with a library called read line which allows you to edit your history and edit the command line so it has the same keys as emacs and control a takes you to the beginning of a file control e to the end of the file you can use control r to search and up arrow down arrow will take you to the history control k to delete the thing you can look up all the keys on google and if you want to remap a key go to your home directory dot input rc you put all your uh, mapping one key to another another command or whatever command you want to map your keys to and you can find more information and documentation in bash read line or google input rc so what are the common unix commands that you'll be using so this assumes that you install sigwin on windows or you're running on linux ls will list the files cat will print the files man will give manual help cp will copy the source to the target move will copy move the files rm will remove the file cd will take you change the directory to the argument pwd shows you the present working directory grep regular expression will search for the regular expression in the given files and more will list file page by page and lot more commands you need to probably read a unix book like unix programming environment by conversion pike to get all these commands and demo command like ps to show the processes currently running who's who's logged on probably nowadays you don't see unless you're using a big system you won't see anyone else besides you logged on this shows you the date cal shows you the calendar http changes the terminal settings and ch mode changes the permissions on files and folders and vim is a editor emacs is also a text editor and network commands that you'll probably using a ping host so you can say ping google.com to see you send a packet to google, uh, the host and it will reply so you can see how much time it takes to reach uh, is, is it a connection working or not trace root host shows you the 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 root on network on the network as a packet goes around the network so it'll tell you how much time each packet took uh, trying to reach uh, intermediate destination and the final destination and then to do dns name lookup you can use ns lookup so all these are command lines mail to read or send mail probably won't be using a lot because nowadays you don't have mail you just use uh, https and using a web interface ftp also is probably deprecated because it's insecure file transfer wget downloads url telnet will log you into a host but insecurely so nowadays you're probably using ssh and on windows you'll be using something called putty to log into using ssh and finger shows you about some other user on some other host so probably many of these commands don't work anymore because most people don't have unix accounts anymore they have uh just standalone host running connected internet so what does the process look like a process like ls is a process it has an input coming in from standard input which is the user input and ls doesn't have any user input but it could have it's on zero and the command is ls options are minus al and slash is an argument 
and the output goes to standard output which is your screen and it could also go to a file or you can connect something else to it and the second output is the standard error if there are any problems it comes out here because this could be connected to a different pipe and our error could be coming to your screen so you can cache errors so every process in unix has the same format you could have multiple more more pipes connected to it but we're not showing more pipes because these are the default pipes a process gets and if you want to save the output use use the greater than sign and suppose you want to count all the all the number of lines in slash etc shells you just say wc word count minus lines and slash etc shells it will print number of lines and it goes into the file called x wherever x is in the current folder and what is it inside x you say cat x to see say 16 number of lines in file shells is 16 and if you want to save the error messages you need to say 2 greater than so that's the standard error the file descriptor of a standard error is 2 file descriptor 2 that gets saved in errors.txt file and, er and then you can use the more command to print out errors and if you want to read from a file you just say uh, wc minus l and then uh, it will read the standard input if there is no arguments to it and then you can change the standard input of wc command by the less than sign this sign and then you say slash extra shell so your bash will basically take open the shells file and and feed the, the lines in it to wc command and then wc will print to your screen 16 lines and you can redirect both input and output from the command line by pointing shells to it and output going to another file called x and you can also save output redirect output to files we can say wc something to slash temp y cat temp y is showing 16 lines 16 words and 186 characters and you can save both together like wc minus w or gcc minus wall that means warning all warnings and then you're running compiling a file called bigfact.c and you're sending the mess um, the messages to x and then you there's two ampersand one greater than ampersand means basically i want to redirect the standard error to standard out so two goes to one and ampersand one means uh, standard out so two is going to standard out so basically all the everything errors and messages go to the file called x so how does it work so you have a command and then you have a, the bar or the pipe character and the output of command 1 goes into as an input to command 2 so the command 1 file descriptors are 0 1 2 and slash tty 0 is the, the, the output and then the the out, output the, the 1 the standard output of the pipe goes into the standard input of the second command so shell will connect it all for you based on the syntax of the command you type in so the command 1 will run and this output will go into command 2 so example you can say cat shells and then pipe it to wc so basically the way it does inside the, this operating system is it runs uh, command 1 runs and then a standard output is buffered into write into a system uh, kernel buffer and then that is a, a virtual file and that feeds into the standard of the next command and you can have a pipeline of multiple commands so you can say cat something grab something and then count you will count number of sh in the shell file this command so you can connect a bunch of command program 1 program 2 program 3 so the keyboard says the standard in and output of one goes to the next command and the error goes to the screen immediately it doesn't go to the pipeline and finally you see the final output so this is 2 so cat grab wc is a pipeline of 3 commands and then you can run a command in background and usually on windows you don't see it but on linux you don't you have a screen and you, you can run commands that take a lot of time in the background without even needing a ui see wc something and then you say ampersand that means run the process in the background in this case a very small very fast command so it immediately say done job one got done in background and then you'll get a uh, output done then you later on you can open cat slash temp x to see what happened and the thing is 
on star and question mark get globbed by the shell so when you say echo star star doesn't remain a star star will match every file name in the current folder if you don't want to match uh, star to match anything you just put double quotes around it or you put a backslash in front of it it will just print the star character and similarly the variable dollar means uh, the value of the variable you see dollar echo dollar home is prints slash echo john john is the thing and you can stick things around it like some string before and after and you need to put curly braces around home so it will print slash home john and whatever was before and after the string and if you put a single quote it will not expand the string inside single quotes there's no interpretation interpolation of variable is inside single quotes and if you put a backslash in front of the dollar uh, the dollar loses special meaning it just become a regular character in a string it will just echo as it is and in bash if you are typing a command a lot of times you can just create an alias or short command for it so you can say alias dir equal to ls minus al so when, uh, if you are used to windows uh, typing dir you can type dir on bash and bash the alias dir will expand to ls and similarly if you would like a particular date format you can just say date plus percentage y md and then date is, is a, will print some date whatever the current date happens to be and then if you have a lot of commands to print together you can create a function you can say function and function name arguments to it and then a list of commands so you can say code seconds and then if you really you can call inside dollar parenthesis you can call other unix commands and whatever command you call out here inside the dollar parenthesis will get executed and that that will get replaced by the output of that uh, command so perl minus e print time so that will get replaced by whatever number of seconds julian seconds date seconds and then date yesterday you can use a gnu date one day ago to print the date yesterday with some format today you can just say date zero days ago and and in the future you want to see tomorrow's date is a date plus one days so it will print tomorrow's date so that's how you write a function then you say dates you get all the four lines executed echo and then this string is replaced by the string like that and then if you have a lot of commands you can put it in a file say script you don't need any extension on Linux unlike Windows and the first line has to be the name of the interpreter so bang slash bin bash so then the shell knows what kind of inter who's going to execute this command the script and then hash means a comment so then it's ignored by bash so my first comment in this file then you say echo my first script hello user then you need to do ch mode to make the script executable otherwise it's a text file then you can say script and why do you need dot slash because script will only look for batch will only look for commands in the path unlike windows it won't look in a current folder because it's a security problem so when you say dot slash script it means in the current folder there's a file called script run that script then bash will look at the first line of script to see what kind of interpreter to call it will say bash and then script dot slash script then bash will run the, the script and bash will ignore the first two lines because they comments third line is echo it will echo and then dollar user is a username it will interpolate dollar user to your name and if you really want to see what's inside the script debug the script you can use the minus x minus verbose flags to bash and bash will run the script and tell you what's it doing and bash scripting has all kinds of control commands so you can say if then else if else and if he means end of if and double square bracket inside double square bracket you can give commands condition which will evaluate so you say if file 1 is newer than file minus nt is the operator then file 2 then say file 1 is newer than file 2 if 20 is greater than 5 20 is greater than 5 print that true is basically a dummy statement in case you need to write a statement and you don't have nothing to say instead of saying echo as in windows so you can write another script we can use a case statement dollar hash stands for number of arguments to the script and then in the case when it's 0, 1, 2, 3 and the case end case is du double semicolon and finally the end of the case is e case spell backwards and then there's also a for loop the for you can get a variable name in 
some uh, list of uh, strings so in this case what we'll do is and then you have some commands and then uh, done that means end of the for loop we'll run for first time we'll run this command with user equal to a second time we'll run it with user equal to b third time user equal to c it will run the command and the whole thing is a one command so after done you redirect the output of the command to a file called list.txt similarly there's a while loop you can say while some you have a file called temp x.log it's a variable assigning to it then you're saying while minus not minus s of dollar file that means while my file is has zero size keep doing it echo waiting for file to fill up and then sleep one it will wait for one second and continue and come back to done so when file gets one character it will stop and a problem if you don't put a sleep it will run in a busy loop and it will slow down the machine so you want to wait between every command every time you look for it you don't look for it till you sleep after one second and then if you really want to use complete commands you can use Perl suppose you want to change in all your C files you misspell some word you can just say minus Perl minus P to print I minus I dot back that means change the file name to dot back if you edit the file and then execute the script substitute there with there and globally on a multiple times on each line and my backslash b means word boundary so inside both the there should be ending and beginning of a word okay so this will run a command to multiple so again pearl can do a lot more that batch would be difficult in batch and so let's compare the differences with windows so in windows the backslash is a, a files uh, folder there's a directory separator parts up in parts and in unix it is slash and unix the backslash is used for coding characters and the root of a file system is c colon backslash on unix it is uh, linux bash bas it is slash and line ending is a big problem between windows and linux on windows it is backslash carriage return backslash new line two characters on and the reason the two characters are there because the printer needed two characters one is to move the printer down by one line and the carriage is a printing carriage which had to move to the beginning of the line and unix just backslash n that means go to next line and the windows shell is called cmd and on uh, unix it is called bash and on windows file names are not case in, uh, not sensitive that means there and there mean the same thing but in, in bash and unix ls and capital ls mean different things syntax is inconsistent every command has its own syntax on windows but on unix every command follows the same format so if it if it works in one place it will work in another place on unix so it's easier to learn linux scripting and variables are basically you want to interpolate a variable you put the percentage around the variable on unix you put a dollar in front of the variable name to evaluate the value of the variable and things which are different uh, the same so there are many commands in windows and unix which have the same name but they do different things for example echo find date time for if make their link they do different things on windows and there's an equivalent command on linux so you might get confused so you probably need to rename the linux command so that you can use it without in, uh, clashing with the windows command and then later on we look at putty which is a windows console to connect to unix using ssh and rsh okay that's it